Hello, my name is Joe Kaneen, the Video Whisperer, and this is going to be a review on a pretty new and definitely very clever and innovative LED panel design called FlexLight. Perfect for the run and gunner who doesn't want to carry around a truckload of equipment. And as you can see, it's completely flexible. You could curl that up into a cylinder and wrap it with rubber bands and drop it into a, a Chinese lantern for overall illumination if you'd wanted to. And to put on a light stand, use this accessory, which gets assembled together very easily. And there's two places you can mount it. Either there, or on the side there. And what's really cool is you could put it on the end of a, uh, a monopod or a selfie stick or something like that and give it to an assistant to carry around with a battery pack. Let's say you're doing man-on-the-street interviews or something like that. And the assistant could just hang it in front of you to uh, provide facial fill. What I did is I took my existing softbox and put Velcro inside of it, as you can see there. And then I took a hot pipe, a hot rod, and melted a hole through it. That's so the uh, PowerPoint can come out of the lighting device. And there it is inside. And of course you can put your uh, diffuser material on the outside of the softbox. And it comes with a dimmer which will dim it from 10% power to 100% power, a long extension cable if you need it. And for safekeeping, I keep it in the uh, plastic envelope it came in and slip it into a, a little file folder case. Then pop it in the top of my lighting bag. Okay, uh, a few points. The uh, company that produces the light does have a prototype softbox that's made for the light should be available soon I took a rather crappy picture of it at the uh, broadcast video expo uh, number two it can be battery powered like all LEDs um, the distributor provides a clip-on V-lock uh, V-lock base that can go on your belt and works with any V-lock battery um, I'll have links to all this stuff on the blog, direct links to the, the V-Lock, the, the battery, the whatever else, the light itself. Um, and it's time to do an experiment. Um, uh, I'm not sure if this will work, but if it doesn't, it won't be in the video, but I think it will. What I'm going to do is stop here now, and I'm going to set the light to full intensity. Uh, I'm going to readjust the camera manually for correct exposure on the face and it's really going to be a test to see if the color temperature which I won't change it's set to 56 K right now if it maintains at full intensity okay here we go okay as near as I can tell that is the same exposure on my face now the camera was set to f 3.4 it's now an f 4.4 I presume that's a stop difference or twice as bright the next thing I'm going to do is, and by the way, this was a test to see if the color stayed the same. I won't know until I look back at this. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that LED out and I'm going to put my fluoro light in without moving the light or changing anything else. I won't pay any attention to color temperature for this test. It's really just to see um, the direct comparison on, on brightness. Okay, that is my 105 watt uh, fluoro bulb, as you can see. Um, this is at the last setting the LED was on, which was at 4.4. And now let's see if we can get an exposure by opening it up. At 3.4. Yeah. So that tells me that the uh, LED is twice as bright, which is good news. Okay, let me put the LED back in there. All right, that should bring me back to where I was when I started. Now, I discovered this light at the uh, Broadcast Video Expo in London a couple of months ago. Uh, I went there specifically to look at LED technology, and I got to tell you, it is advanced amazingly in the last few years and it's clear to me in the next few years the entire industry both film and video will be using LED 
technology and uh, the, the fluorescent and halogen will be a thing of the past. The reason I like this one, of course, is because, interestingly, it didn't follow the traditional uh, path of being encased in a housing. Nobody probably ever thought of that except the guys that made this thing. I mean, if you think about it, inside those aluminum housings with all their nice knobs and buttons and all that kind of stuff is a panel, just like this one. Except they made this one flexible and it doesn't have to be encased in a housing. You don't have to have that extra weight and volume. And that's what drew my attention to it and it's why I now own two of them. So, till I find the next thing I'm happy to buy and review, see you later.